Hey guys, welcome, welcome on in to Interstage Window, our Saturday stream that's conversation with friends. And and the, there's a problem though, guys. Landon yeah. is back in the computer. She's she's not here anymore. I'm back to being she's 2D. I mean, I was always 2D for you guys, but I'm 2D again for Karen and it's very, very sad. <laughs> I've been very depressed about it. <laughs> so sad. I'm so sad. <laughs> Later, um, welcome in. Welcome in. Um, what are you I'm having for lunch? Come, I'm just going to have to come back and hang That's out true. again. It's true. It's true. And there's more Charleston to see. So, you know, That's we true. only we only spent like one day running around Charleston. So we got to do that some more. Yeah. And then there's always there's always Portland. I might not have true. The three the three uh monitors set up and the lights and action and everything that you have but it, it'll do it'll do in a pinch i didn't even think about that <laughs> until last week you made the comment right and i was like oh oh i didn't really even think about that but yeah my setup probably does look quite intimidating compared to <laughs> you also work i mean you also work where you're like streaming yeah. from so a lot of it is is probably work related as well but for me i'm like mm -hmm. ah i have my laptop and a makeup light and that's about it <laughs> Yeah, no, it's this is my this is my whole work area. So it's work area for for play work like this and work area for like work work. This both. Yeah. <laughs> so it needs to be fancy. Mine, mm -hmm. mine, I can throw together a little bit. But you know what? Yes. We're slowly going up in the world. Uh, I've ordered some fun stuff that might make this setup look different. So Ooh. fingers crossed that that arrives next week. Okay. Okay, fancy. You yeah. might actually be able to see the makeup instead of just the blur that is. No, we can see it. I feel like <laughs> I can see it. I don't know. You guys can see it, right? I mean, she looks. She looks. She was very beautiful today with the like the Thank pink you. and the purple. And it's very. Went, we didn't. We didn't plan this right, but she's definitely matching the background of Cinderella's castle that I chose. I was like, mm, what three colors are Disney? purple pink and light blue <laughs> it's true i mean it's true you got the the purple and light blue is like in general disney and then you've got that particular pink that they use in their princess line so it's a very disney combination yes yes but nope uh unfortunately we're back to back to normal and we'll just have to stay that way until the next time we're reunited yes all right well that being said um landon what is it that we're going to talk about today we're going to talk about disney remakes why they suck, why they're getting old, and why we love them anyways. Uh, <laughs> and... Different comments for different particular remakes. Guess which one's for which. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You won't have to guess because we're going to tell you. We're going to rank all of them in order right here, right now. Uh, and we're going to talk about the pros and cons and, and what Disney did right and what Disney did wrong with each of these. Possibly some scandals, if there were some scandals. Uh, possibly some animal abuse. <laughs> um... <laughs> spicy yep. we'll, we'll talk about all of it so Ooh. uh that's what we're gonna do today but first karen what was your favorite thing this week okay so since we're talking about disney i just had to like say I, I i'm sure there's some episode somewhere where i've said this before but i just have to tell you guys okay um the best ride at disney is the new ride in the pandora like avatar area mm. where you get on the like bird dinosaur things and you fly around if y'all have not had a chance to get on this ride you have got to do it and of course you know now that we're on our disney bullshit right i've been thinking about walt disney world and gosh when am i going to get a chance to go back to a theme park like who knows the world is still like not safe for theme parks i don't feel comfortable going to one but like i miss them so much um and i have to say that the the avatar area in animal kingdom is like y'all it's so good it's so good um i haven't been to the new star wars area yet so for anybody commenting on that i haven't seen that yet i, I don't know i've heard it's not very good unfortunately um but i i just i love it and since halloween's coming up i've been thinking about you know universal studios does this halloween horror nights that's amazing so yeah, my favorite thing this week is um is just to shout out my uh my favorite ride at Disney World, which is the the Pandora area like flying thing. And also I just honorable mention to my favorite boring ride, Spaceship Earth at Epcot. It's the best. <laughs> I have such fond memories of being like so tired Check in up. Epcot and like, let's get on Spaceship Earth so that we can just relax in the air conditioning for a while. <laughs> I think I think Epcot hits different when you're an adult. Oh yeah. You get to drink. Mm -hmm. And drinking around the world is is something I haven't done yet. I really want to do it. 
um, as far as Epcot goes. But I think as a kid, I remember going to Epcot and just being like, I don't, I don't care. <laughs> See, I loved Epcot as a kid because it had Figment, that... which was my favorite. And it had the dinosaur ride before they added Ellen. Y'all, it was cooler without Ellen. I'm sorry. Like, it just was. Um, so, you know, it was different, but I think, I, I think Disney probably were, were just different enough in age that you would have seen a bit of a different Epcot. And I have to say like the Epcot of my teenage years was not the Epcot of my childhood. The, yeah, the early, say... the early nineties, late eighties Epcot was like, it was so good y'all. It was so good. It was so yeah, good. And then my parents were happy because I... they got to have beer. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> By the time I got there, no more figment, no no rides really at Epcot except for um they still had the dinosaur the, ride, but it was probably yeah, the, the it was probably the ride. Ellen version. You probably yes. like maybe saw the non-Ellen version like one or two times. Yeah, no, not not even that much because I I'd only gone to like Disney once before I was an adult. So, yep. yeah, no, it just it definitely it hits different. Yeah, uh, as an adult. So I'm excited to go back if I ever do, if this pandemic ever ends. <laughs> someday. It will someday. It will someday. And then we'll be able to take more, do more yeah. um, vacations. Thank you so much for the hydrate tap. I will take that. And welcome in, Kitty. I see you're here too. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today for our... Um... <laughs> I've been right. wanting to say your name like that too, and it just hasn't come out ever since you started going by Kitty. It's like I wanted to say Kitty. Kitty. <laughs> every time, every time that's gonna be my greeting from now on. I'm just gonna be um, Boo from Monsters Inc. <laughs> True, I love it. All right, so that's my favorite thing this week, um, just because I want to talk about some fun Disney things. Landon, what's your favorite thing this week? I would have to say uh, I am exhausted. I am tired, but school is back, baby. Uh, and I am with a new round of same children, well, not same children, but same age group, same class, just a lot of different children. Uh, and it's so funny. They're so, they're so funny. Uh, and it's just, sometimes they say funny things that make your day. My funny. favorite, <laughs> they are. No, my favorite, uh, was that we were, we were talking about uh, the movie Top Gun came up on a conversation just because of a oh, book we were reading. A classic. Uh, and classic, yep. And a little 11-year-old boy goes, Top Gun is my favorite movie. It has planes and swearing. And I'm just like, okay. <laughs> can you not say that that's why it's your favorite in front of your teacher? And he just looks at me and he goes, well, honestly, Miss B, I haven't seen it. I just know I'll really like it. <laughs> and it made my week. I know that scene <laughs> sounds so silly. I know that sounds so stupid. I know this kid. I know this kid has definitely not seen Top Gun if he says that he hasn't. And it's just so funny to be like, yeah, your favorite movie is a movie you think is about planes and swearing. Mm. And that's why you like it. <laughs> you mean the kid was about to get some props for me for actually having like a very good favorite movie choice at 11 years old but now that I hear the full context of the story child please <laughs> Don't. So funny. stop <laughs> and it's, just, it's been non-stop jokes of, of very similar to that where it's just like ah you are a child and I'm going to laugh at you uh, Y'all, so... I have to say Landon is a powerhouse for dealing with these children's I oh I could never I could never <laughs> <laughs> it's an interesting week so they are they are both my favorites and the least favorite thing but being back into school it's a difficult time getting like classroom set up being in like literally 12 hour days of meetings to finally be able to like have your classroom and have your kids it's so much fun uh and also that means most of the day I get to talk about books and reading and writing and recommend books which is honestly all I ever wanted to do, what, do when I was a kid so that's all I want <laughs> yeah oh my god I love that Kendra make sure to, sure to tell Eliza that we said hi and um we're in the computer that's where we are Eliza. so yeah <laughs> apparently she heard us and wants to know where Kendra's friends are we're inside the computer that's we're, where all the friends are Eliza you'll learn that someday Disney we're at Disney <laughs> Eliza if gosh I, I wish loud enough do you think she'll get excited Disney <laughs> yeah, I'm making I'm making uh Kendra's life difficult right now. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Kitty, you don't. It's just a lot of sarcastic comments from me. Don't tease her. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I'm also really mean to children. I tease them about Disney. Uh, <laughs> Listen, I've told her she's too small for Disney. She, she actually she, might be, she is yeah. Too small for Disney. She would yeah. not have fun. And you she, would not she have She has fun to be older. Her. 
Right. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, we went when we were really little, but my parents had a very specific strategy with for how to make that work, where we would go to go when the park opened, right? And we always stayed on property so we could get the the good shuttles to the park, right? And um, we'd go when the park opened and we'd stay until lunchtime. And then once we started complaining we were hungry for lunch, we went back to the hotel, we had lunch, we had a nap, and if we refused to nap, they threw us in the swimming pool. And then after that, we went back to the park. So there was none of this like, you know, 2 p.m. meltdown or whatever, because yeah. we were at the hotel at that time. If we wanted to have our meltdown, we could go have it in the hotel room. <laughs> that is that is the big the big thing. And then also like just Disney with little kids is not. I know it's built for little kids, but it's not the vibe. Like the mm -mm. kids have the attention span of 15 of like 15 minutes max. Uh, not even that, but that is like really well behaved, bribed to the nines. That is the best they can do. Uh, and lines are 45 minutes and it's true. shows are 45 minutes. And all of these things are near an hour that taking a small child makes no sense. I, yeah. I think the optimal age for Disney parks are older than 12. You need to be older than 12. Yeah. Although if you have really little kids that, you know, aren't like speaking yet and don't really get a say, it's also a really good vacation because they do have a lot of spots. Like it's not, if you're not looking for them, you won't notice. But if you're looking for them, you'll notice um, a lot of sp spots for like moms to sneak off and, and breastfeed and things like that. They, yes. um, they'll supply you diapers, uh, things of that nature. Other theme parks won't really do that. But Disney's pretty special in that way. They have built for small children, but I'm just saying yeah. like as a parent. It's hard. It it don't don't do that to yourself it's hard also it's really they hard. won't remember it like yeah. i know you remember a, a little bit when you were a kid but they most kids won't remember it if they're old, yeah younger well we, we went every summer we went every summer so that's, that's right. why i have memories oh, you were it. you were down south so yep it was very easy for us all, all right. right so well before we want it before we actually get into the ranking do we want to talk a little bit about this whole disney remake strategy and how we feel about it so everybody can know where we're coming from yes let's okay. talk about that <laughs> Okay, um, so right. lay it on us, Landon. How, how do you feel about this? What's your what's your opinion? So, what's your thoughts? I kind of hinted at it last week, but I came up with this wonderful metaphor. And that was like when Disney had its golden age and its renaissance age. It was like at its young to mid-20s. It was, it was chilling. It was cool. It was getting all the girls. Everybody loved them. And now that we've entered the 2021s, where it's the quality of movies it has significantly gone down unless they are tied to Pixar. Uh, Disney itself, I feel like, is missing some of that, of that love and magic and, and it wants the attention and craves the box office numbers mm -hmm. uh, that it could used to be able to pull solo without Pixar. Uh, if you know a company was an entity with thoughts and feelings, you know what I mean. So basically, it <laughs> we're pretending entered, it's a metaphor, right? <laughs> it has entered its midlife crisis where it's like, man, I was so hot when I had that red convertible. Uh, so let me go buy a red convertible, and the red convertible just happens to be every movie that it made in the 90s, uh, or before the 90s. And it, you know what? For like the first year, it worked. We really appreciated the first year, the creativity that came with those early movies. And then we were like, as fans, we were like, no, you were hot back then because you were hot and creative. And now you're just old with a Mustang. Yep. <laughs> and that's, I, no, that's I totally it. agree. Like, like as <laughs> Disney has become bigger and bigger and bigger, like the bigger a company gets, the more adverse to risk it is the more dangerous it is for them to fail because they have lots of people depending on them to make their money and things of that nature, right? So the larger the company gets, the more likely this is to happen. But I agree, Disney, by and large, does not have the creativity it used to have. Its creativity is in the the purchases that it has made. It's not actually in Disney itself. Like, I feel like there's a lot of creativity that goes into um, certain aspects of the MCU that I really appreciate. I know we've not talked much about MCU on this channel, but I would yeah. love to eventually get to that because um, I think I think there's some really amazing things that they're doing. Also, some really awful things. So it's perfect for us. We can we can complain and praise at the same time. We love to do that. <laughs> Um, and there's a lot of a lot of it's true, right? <laughs> there's a lot of creativity in Pixar, like you said. I totally agree with that. But there's not a lot of creativity in what's coming out of Disney. I truly think the fact that like um, Frozen resonated with so many people was a fluke. I don't think Disney really believed in it or thought that this was going to happen. Because if you remember when Frozen first came out, they had all these 
um, Anna dolls, thinking everyone was going to love her as the new Disney princess. And they had, like, they had no Elsa merch. And everyone was like, I fucking love Elsa. Right? It also wasn't advertised. It wasn't. Like, how it was advertised. You didn't know what the story of Frozen was before going into it. You really like, didn't. I remember seeing trailers for it. And I know it was a. It was the big movie of the year. Disney didn't have another movie, so it was premiering around Christmas time, which means Disney did have some belief in it. But it certainly wasn't going to be as big as it as it turned out to be in their mind at all. Yeah, they had no idea it was going to be what it was. Yeah, and and you know that because of what they created, as well as um like the merch that they created, as well as is that they ran out. Mm-hmm. There was like three or four months where Disney didn't have merch yep. Uh, yep. for Frozen, which made it Everybody so was like, where's my Elsa doll? <laughs> and yeah. everybody was out. There was no Elsa dolls. Yeah, Kendra, exactly. I think that's a really good, really good point. I think they thought that they had another Tangled, but they didn't. They had something yeah. crazy amazing. And I, and I think that that's, this is really indicative of the problem that's happening with Disney right now is they don't know, like they're not really tapped into what the market wants. They, they don't, they're not really supporting their creatives to, to build what the market wants. Like it's just, it's just not that right. Whereas back in the, um, in the uh, late eighties and throughout the nineties, they, they were just like, their creatives were like so plugged in to the zeitgeist. Like they, they knew, they knew what people wanted and they were making it like, they were making a banger every year, like every year, like a a bad Disney movie in the Renaissance era was still like, it was still so good. You know? I also, I also feel like there is this, like, I I think the large company matters, Mm -hmm. but I also think that companies are a lot like addicts in some way. And that means that they're chasing a high. Yeah. And so like we hit Frozen because I think that there hasn't been a good movie since Frozen. Frozen objectively good, right? Tangled was good. So there were a couple here and there prior to Frozen that were good. But ever since Frozen, when it blew up to a huge scale, Mm -hmm. um, Disney has been chasing that dream and that horse and that high again it broke records it broke box office records it's still like one of the most like the highest grossing animated movie of all time like it's ridiculously up there um it made so much money like so much money and so that company is trying to tap into that trying to find money whereas in the 90s disney wasn't small but it was smaller um and they had competition they had competition. They didn't have yeah. competition. And also it was a creative venture. Um, it, it was really a, it was a house for artists. And why they were coming out with bangers every year is because it took three or four years for a movie to be made. So they greenlit two or three movies a year. Mm-hmm. In, starting in the 80s and then coming out all the way through the 90s. Yep. And then money started being the big contributing factor it started like and obviously in companies it always is but the production house of hollywood started taking disney seriously after the 90s uh, renaissance and during that time so that became its main focus rather than the art they acquired pixar um they started making purchases the company started getting bigger and it started about being making money instead of making good quality movies yep yeah it's it's Um, it's i mean it's literally i mean i really think the big difference is is that they're basically a monopoly now. Like almost every piece yeah. of entertainment that you touch that's family friendly is going to be under Disney's umbrella, even if it's not branded as such. And that wasn't true back in the Disney Renaissance. You know, um, Bluth was making a lot of movies, right? That's like Anastasia, Secret of Nim, et cetera, et cetera. Pixar was making its first movies um, a little bit later than that. Uh, so they had actual competition and that's just not true anymore. That's just not true. Yeah, Lunar, that is a good fun fact. Um, Elsa was supposed to be the villain until Let It Go changed it all. And that sealed its fate for Elsa being the queen that um, so many little girls love. (laughs) And also, like, the queen, I feel that truly so much about what is happening, and Karen and I were talking about this before the stream, so Mm -hmm. much about what is happening with these remakes is it's almost like trying to rewrite mistakes that they realized that they had made because times have been changing yeah so like uh, it, and it's very annoying because like it's like they take these um uh, like college humor videos like jokey joke videos talking about how all these plot holes in beauty and the beast and it's like disney took it seriously or something yeah. it's like it's really it's really dumb 
or they're like oh feminism is a big thing now so we should make our movies feminist movies because Mulan did so well as a feminist movie and then like very much like they did with Mulan it missed the mark completely yeah like the the idea that like it has to be heavy-handed feminism um in all of these remakes so you have it's like it's like it's like excuse me it's like they're trying to do um feminism that is somehow also compliant to the status quo and you just end up with this completely muddled mess of nothing yes and it also means that none of these movies age right no. because it is trying to hit a demographic and a like okay so things socially right now in the time that we are present are moving so fast politically like in the mm-hmm. grand scheme of things in the last 10 years things have become legalized and have been challenged as far, as far as like systematically more than in the previous 40 yeah <laughs> so the last it's the, it's years, the internet i mean we go we are breakneck lightning pace right now absolutely and because of the communication and being able to find people similar than yourself and being able to have all of these communities form over like online rather than having to form them in the community that you exist it allows for spreading faster but yeah. that means that things are changing at a breakneck pace which means that if disney has an idea of how to apply feminism to their movies four years ago they write a script they get it greenlit they get it filmed they get it produced they get it uh edited and then they get the release for it it takes four year process three year process and now all of a sudden that idea is three years behind (laughs) like it's, it's it's really unfortunate and they're trying to keep up with current times instead of thinking about hey where is this going where is the future what we're is just it focusing on the want story they want to tell uh, yeah yeah I, well because they're they're trying to be relevant they're yeah. trying to focus on relevant things so they're not focusing on storytelling they've lost yep. storytelling they lost storytelling when they started prioritizing uh box office sales over art mm-hmm. uh which they started doing when they it became a multi like industry uh when they started like consuming company. everything around them <laughs> Yeah, when they started consuming Pixar, when they started having more employees, right? They started having, the stakes were higher. They started to have to make more money. Um, Other movies started making more money. People started going to the movies more. It was easier to make money, a whole thing. Um, So they are no longer concerned about the story that they're telling. And because of that, they're trying to send messages that they think will resonate with audiences that are four years ago. Because it takes four years to make a movie. Yeah, it does. It does. Yeah, oh, exactly. Mochi, I love this Frozen comment. Two. Disney especially lost storytelling when they made Frozen 2. 100%. They, it's, it's, nobody talks about Frozen 2 because even the people that liked Frozen think Frozen 2 is awful. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's an example of it. And, and it's not a terrible sequel. It just didn't live up to the Frozen expectations. Yeah. And the lessons that they were trying to ingrain because their stories have to have lessons. That's what they've decided as Disney. The lessons that they were trying to ingrain were old. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. okay, Elsa can love herself, great. But, you know, we're also, the entire fandom is talking about how le- how uh, Elsa's love interest should be a woman and then got really disappointed when it turned out to be herself singing to yeah, herself. Yeah, it's why, why like, you shouldn't <laughs> listen to fandom conjecture, but <laughs> oh, absolutely that's a not. whole other thing. That's, that, <laughs> like, in general, just the problem that is happening is it's they're trying to they're trying to focus on issues that they think that they need to retcon from their earlier works especially in these remakes Mm -hmm. and by the time those remakes get greenlit made and produced and released to the public those points are long gone yeah no one cares anymore and we'll talk about this as we start ranking but i was telling karen before this the new cinderella on amazon which is not a remake uh because it's not disney but um that new Cinderella is like trying to really hit home that women can have careers. Well, guess what? <laughs> That's been common knowledge for 15 years now. Like, uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh huh. Yes. Yeah, All right. Well, should, should we go ahead and start the ranking? I think we should start the ranking. Okay. All right. You guys can do this too. So this is on. I made this on Tier Maker, so everyone can do it along with us. And I would love to see your rankings at the end. Um, but here it is, y'all. Here's our here's our rankings. So we can put these movies in a couple different categories. We can say actually good, somewhat entertaining, bad, very bad, or why even this is even bad at being a cash grab. 
Oh. All right. So what are what are we starting with, Landon? What what movie is first Let's up on the chopping with the block? First remake that came out of the gate, which was Alice in Wonderland. Mm. The first Alice in Wonderland. Okay. The first one. So yeah. this movie for me, um, I mean, it's it's Johnny Depp, which at the time I wasn't tired of him yet, right? Mm-hmm. It's also got the lovely ineffable Alan Rickman as the caterpillar. Yep. Um you know, I, I don't hate this movie. I think it's fine. I'm not sure it's necessarily anything as good as the animated version of Alice in Wonderland. Um, but uh, I think the things that they do with the world are, are kind of interesting, you know, making it a little bit of like a, a war story. You know, they add in some stuff. It's not bad. It's it's I would say it's somewhat entertaining. Yeah, I would I would very much agree with that i think that they added some stakes they made it feel more real and relevant whereas the Mm -hmm. regular alice in wonderland when it was made it was a total form of escapism so kids didn't want anything to like they disney and other uh kid children's production companies weren't focusing on the things in real life right they were trying to keep everything fantasy so the well and the book's not real either i mean the book is very like alice goes into a rabbit hole meets a series of annoying people and then goes back home i mean there really isn't a story (laughs) yes um so i i agree that like adding that context really allows like kids and adults to connect to it in more of a way uh alan rickman's great Johnny Depp is great in it. Um, I actually think that I really like him as the Mad Hatter. Um, Yeah, he's good, right? He's good as the Mad Hatter. The problem is for me, and this will be a trend with several of these, uh, is that I disliked the original. (laughs) Like, Alice in Wonderland never did it for me. Uh, So, like, comparing something that I didn't particularly like to something that is slightly better um I would I would have to say the live action for me is something that I was entertained by but I still don't like necessarily watch it <laughs> so I would Got it. it somewhat entertaining I would for, for different reasons movie. than I did <laughs> yes. um Kendra your comment is so funny the, she had, I think she's talking about the original story the story was away from Andy creep on his friend's kid bad yes. <laughs> that's true that's actually I I have heard this as well and as far as I can tell that is a true account of um the actual Alice in Wonderland this man was attracted to his friend's young young daughter um and so he wrote a story for her slash about her <laughs> Yeah. I like Alice in Wonderland, by the way. I think I think it's fantastic. I think the I think a, the poetry and it's great. I love it. I think it's an interesting world. I think that there's some amazing quotes yeah. uh, from it that are just like, oh, this line is really relevant and mm-hmm. we're all mad here. It's great. Uh, okay, well, Kendra. Yep. <laughs> if y'all didn't know before, yeah. sorry that we're ruining Alice in Wonderland for you by letting you know the truth of the story. <laughs> It doesn't surprise me this that this author seems that kind Mm -hmm. um but i but i think that it's it's a it's a it is entertaining to watch somewhat entertaining yep and this kicked off a whole thing right because they saw great success with this and i and i think the reason this movie was so like box office successful was because of the um the art direction the costuming the casting things of that nature so i don't necessarily think the story was what pulled people in they weren't they weren't like oh this is an amazing retelling of alice in wonderland i think it was more like this is a beautiful retelling of alice in wonderland and and that's why people were so drawn to it and saw it yeah, the CGI, the set dressing, everything like that was beautiful. But uh, uh, Bohemian Car- Helena Bohemian Carter is in this too. Too. Yes, right? she's the that, queen. The, she's the evil queen. So mm-hmm. it had some. It had some really big names as far as Alan Rickman goes, and um, and Helena Bonham Bohemian Carter, Carter yep. and Johnny Depp. Like it, and I think it was a good cast of of characters. Uh, and also, it was. It's also directed by. Oh, what's his name? I don't know, feel free to feel free to look it up if you can't remember names and things like that. We're we're okay to cheat today, um, but yeah, and it was it was really good, and uh, and I think Disney Disney saw this and was like, oh, we have this huge back catalog that we can potentially you know mine new content from, and um, and of course at the corporate level that is much less expensive to do that creatively than to make new things whole cloth because you kind of already can start hit the ground running right yep. so so this is kind of this is kind of the the beginning this is the little this is a little pebble starting down the hill of like ooh, ooh, this might be a good strategy yeah. 
Uh, Tim Burton was the name that I was going for. So it was a it was a Tim Burton cast and a Tim Burton movie, and this was before Tim Burton was tired and old. Mm-hmm. Like this is when he was still kind of in his. He wasn't in his heyday, um, but people still liked him. And, we weren't tired of him yet. Yeah, we weren't tired of him yet, and that that phase as far as like being the creepy, creepy, cute. Yeah. Like, so in style, like as far as like how to dress and stuff like that. Yeah, um, and I still like that stuff. So Full as- disclosure. <laughs> um, so aesthetically, this movie was was not only beautiful to watch for like the actual aesthetics of it, but it hit the aesthetics at that point in time. Yep, yep. Uh, talking about it makes me want to go rewatch it. Uh, <laughs> I had to catch up before this stream and watch a bunch of these movies that I hadn't ever actually seen that I had skipped. Um, so I didn't go back and rewatch ones that I hadn't that I had already seen. Um, but talking about it makes me just remember that I actually really did like this movie and um, and I should go rewatch it because it's beautiful. <laughs> oh, all right, all right. Next one, Maleficent. Maleficent. Okay, Maleficent. so I think Maleficent is actually good agree uh they i am not a huge Stephen beauty fan i'm actually not a huge fan of this movie however the concept is creative enough the graphics are beautiful the storyline is unique uh it took the classic story and put a twist on it so there was actually some creative story and it's a telling. good twist and it's a good twist like it, it it is not it didn't change for the purpose of a lesson, it was telling a story and it was successful uh, and it deserved the success that it got. And even though Alice in Wonderland is what like started this idea, Maleficent is what really, really solidified yes. the idea of them going back into the vault, opening it up and redoing all of these things. Yeah. Um, so because- Alice in Wonderland like created the pebble, right? But Maleficent is what like pushed it down the hill. Yeah. Right. I understand that Maleficent is considered a remake. However, honestly, if like I was being really picky, I wouldn't consider Maleficent a remake because it is a completely different movie. Yeah, it is. It's a completely different movie. And that's part of why I love it so much. They really went back to the core of the story and redid it with a whole new thing from the ground up instead of trying to to remake they they really um they they wrote maleficent in the same way that really really good fan fiction is written where you you go back you read the source material and you create something completely new from it only borrowing from the source when necessary exactly um i also think that i mean i don't actually know how this whole series happened but i also think that like angelina jolie not only rocked this but i wouldn't be surprised if they based like a lot of they changed a lot of things when she got on board yes i wouldn't be surprised either this was a very personal project for her she loved it she was part she was a producer which a lot of main actors are Um, but you can tell you can tell yeah. her whole heart is in this. And I think you could tell that, like, specifically, she made choices and there were probably some script decisions based off of her ideas. Um, and well, I know I, one. I know one is a fun fact. I don't know if you're building up to this, so um, so no, I might be ahead. cutting you off. But sorry. But um, she was actually so scary in person as Maleficent that for the scenes with little Aurora, right, with the little girl, that's her daughter because that's the only, one of the few kids they could find that wasn't too scared of her to act next to her. Yeah, that was I remember that. That was so cool. Yeah. Uh, where it was like like everyone else was really scared because of the makeup and then her daughter was just like hi mama <laughs> um no i think it's it's an amazing it's a really beautiful movie uh it's really entertaining it's it's good to watch it's different it, it uses the source material sparingly i think overall pro big mm-hmm. pro super pro super pro hey Kay, welcome you haven't missed much yet um we we kind of set things up about how we feel about the remakes but we just started ranking them we've only ranked two so far so you have not missed the hottest of the hot takes quite yet (laughs) i mean i agree with katie or kitty as far as uh what's on here as far as like maleficent boring i think the pacing of the story um grew on me i had to watch it a couple of times before i actually appreciated the pacing it's slow Um, it's slow it and you slow. don't find that very much in movies anymore. Most movies are like breakneck pace nowadays. Yeah, I also think it breaks the three act rule um, because the first act is so short. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's like, and I think it's actually probably more four act. 
um, and which is which is unique. But if you're used to a three act story, uh, which ninety percent of movies are, it it can feel odd and slow and and timing be weird if if that's what you're picking up on. No, you're right. That first act of this movie is like, I mean, it's, it's tiny. Minutes. This yeah, yeah it's, most of the this movie is its it's its second act and then the third act at the end. But like, yeah, you're right. It has a really short first act and a really long second act. Yes, and and that's that's typical, but also like it's so long, it's disproportional, and that and because of that, it makes it drag. It's yeah, see, like, I guess wow. I don't, I don't feel that way. I don't know, but I I, I haven't rewatched it in quite a while, and I do okay. feel like um more modern movies like in the past five years things have just gotten so fast and people's attention spans are so short that things move like you know at a absolutely breakneck pace yeah just boom 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 all the time and this movie is not like that um it is a much uh older style as far as the slowness and the pacing of it yeah yeah I love Maleficent. Uh, Angelina's cheekbones are to die for. Agree. I like I'm Maleficent. So I, 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 it's not actually good just because it's subjectively good for me. I actually really enjoyed this movie. Mm -hmm. I thought it was excellent, amazing, artistic. Like I just, I could just feel all of the love and passion put into it. You can tell that they were trying to tell a story. Mm -hmm. They weren't trying to make a point. They weren't trying to teach a lesson. Um, they were trying to tell a story. Yeah, that story was familiar but different yeah um and and like yeah no it's you can it's, tell like you can tell when somebody has like something artistic in their heart that they need to get out and I, and that's where we can say something like you know like a, it has a soul and like the soul is very well defined in this movie um yeah. so that's part of why i love it so much no i, I love oh <laughs> thank you Kay. <laughs> <laughs> had to make it disnified. Karen is so good at keeping up with aesthetics and theme. Oh, thank you. It does actually take a lot of time, so I'm glad you guys appreciate I, it. I really appreciate it every time. <laughs> oh, Lunar, what are you having for lunch? I want to know. Okay, what's our next movie? Next movie, Landon. Our next movie is Cinderella. Oh, which... okay. Oh, I have a hill. I have a hill. Okay. Um, I I'm listening. own five movies. I own Crazy Rich Asians. I own The Intern. I own, uh, I don't even remember what that movie is called. It's about the boy who's lost in New York, uh, Christmas time, Home Alone. Uh, I own um, Titanic and I own the live action Cinderella. That's what it. an That's eclectic all. mix. I watch. I love this movie. With It is my comfort movie. I watched it twice this week. <laughs> Like on the, in the background, Cinderella, the live action Cinderella is the ultimate remake. And okay. I know that it is nothing like Maleficent as far as like being different and telling a different story. It is literally copy and paste and then adding edits. But I think that's what makes it beautiful. Okay. Okay. Uh, obviously, we have to put it in the actually good category. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, Tap. I really appreciate that. Um, okay, so I think I think maybe we just have like, we're just mirroring each other. Because like, I feel like Cinderella is, this is an objectively good remake. Um, because it doesn't try to like, fix the problems of the original. And it is a true remake, right? Like they're not telling a new story like they're doing in Maleficent. It's it's more of a remake in the way that Alice in Wonderland is. It is the same story with the same moral lesson with basically the same characters, right? Um, but they they don't try to like, they don't try to like fix the story of Cinderella, which they start doing later, right? They really just focus on, you know, what, what, elements of Cinderella do people want to see now in the 2010s? And how can we emphasize that? How can we draw people in? And of course, they have the big, beautiful dress that I can just spend hours and hours looking at because it's just so freaking gorgeous. And I heard that it weighs like 100 pounds, and it was really difficult for the actress. Um, so so bless her. And thank you for the pain that you went through for our eyeballs. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't this movie. It's okay to me. Um, Cinderella is not my favorite. It doesn't speak to me in the way that some other, you know, Disney princess movies do. Um, but it is actually, it's good. It's objectively good. I, I think what I appreciate is that it takes the source material and it modernizes it and not mm -hmm. by like modernizing. So it takes place these days, but it makes those themes accessible to a modern audience. Mm -hmm. If we had people, I think if these 
I think if kids watched Cinderella now, they wouldn't get it. Like, like not the live action Cinderella, the the, the, the animated one, animated version. Um, I don't think that they would understand it or see the magic. I think even in the '90s, kids struggled with it. It was not really some some of people's favorite princesses were Cinderella, but it wasn't necessarily like the favorite Disney movie. Not really. Um, I mean, if you it, liked one of the old princesses, honestly, it was usually from Sleeping Beauty. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it was classic. It wasn't as outdated back in the 90s as uh, Snow White was, but it was getting there. I think now that if you, this generation was watching it, it would be completely outdated. People wouldn't get it. I think what the live action did is it modernized it. So those themes that are still accurate to the original telling and the original movie are more accessible to generations now and can be and can carry through for the next 15 years yeah right it, it probably won't because movies go out of style that like way quicker than they did necessarily back then because we we're putting out so much media um but it can hold up those themes can resonate for a new generation mm-hmm. um yeah which i think i think really good for a new ma- a, a remake i think that that's actually the goal that they should be trying to, if you're like, gonna yeah if you're gonna do a straight remake that's what you should be doing yeah and so how do they do that they add you know they actually add personality and give the prince a name they give cinderella a reasoning um they they take they make the magic more subtle they let cinderella have a different kind of personality that is still the same personality as before um they they i think that they did a really great job not to mention not just cinderella's dress but all the other costumes are outstanding so good uh cinderella was never my favorite disney princess until the live action cinderella Mm -hmm. Uh, and then i fell in love with it absolutely yeah oh i love that so for those of you guys because i see we've got a few more viewers in here than when we started on the on the tier list you guys can do this too i put a link in the chat and we would love at the end of us building building this tier list to see your tier lists as well um I can, I have a button here. I can click if you, if you save yours, I think the website will show it to me. I believe that's how this works. This is the first time I've actually really using tier lists. So um, correct me if I'm wrong, if you actually know how to use this website and sorry about it. But yeah, I mean, I totally, I totally agree with you. Um, All of that with Cinderella. I, I would say I'm, I'm the same in the sense that I prefer this version to the animated one. Yeah. It's just, it's better. The characters are more fleshed out and I just really love looking at those costumes. <laughs> I mean, really, and also they're so Kate good. Blanchett, also, Kate Blanchett as this evil stepmother is... Yeah. Oh yeah, she's fantastic yeah. in this. And also they like, yeah, it, all the characters got a little bit more something. They weren't just 2D. They existed and were more believable. And I think what also comes with that is time. Um mm-hmm movies uh prior to the 90s they really tried to keep around 100 and like not even 100 minutes sorry uh they tried to keep around 75 minutes especially disney the, movies they were real short came, yeah when it came to the 90s or when it yeah when it came to the 90s it was pushed to an hour and a half it was pushed to 90 minutes mm-hmm. um i feel so like, like titanic we can blame for that <laughs> <laughs> um so we can then uh so then when we move to modern day doing anywhere between an hour and a half and two hours live action is not terrible, which means that there was anywhere between 40, like 30 to 45 minutes that they could add into this movie Mm -hmm. and it'd still be a relatively short movie to watch, like a Disney movie to watch. (laughs) Well, Kay, I feel like you're speaking like Landon's love language right now. I try to fall asleep to Titanic. (laughs) Guess who has two thumbs and stayed up the entire three hours. <laughs> that sounds like something you would do for real. Hundred <laughs> uh, percent. I didn't. I didn't. I watched Titanic over the summers uh, because my grandparents owned it, and I didn't. My family didn't. So every summer would be just Titanic every single day. It'd be great. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. So yeah, Cinderella actually good. Actually good. Genuinely yes. really good. And Mm -hmm. that's the last one on this list. What? Uh (laughs) (laughs) Stream done. We're ending very early today. Thank you guys so much for coming and joining us. (laughs) This is where we should end because it's just going to get sad from here. Pretty much. Um, Okay, let's keep going. The next next movie that came out was The Jungle Book. The 2016 Mm -hmm. Jungle Book. 
Yep. Uh, going to be honest. This is another movie in which I did not like the original. Watch the original. <laughs> I like it. Uh, so I have a real tough time trying to figure out where this is going to go because I'm like, I didn't like the first one. So uh, this one was more boring. It was, it was beautiful. It was great. The CGI was good. But yeah, it was forgettable. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so I think that this goes in the bad category. Yeah. So here's here's why. There are certain elements of this live action version that are fine. You know, um, the things that it it pulls from the animated and the things that it adds in that weren't included in the original animated, but like are in the in the some of the um, Rudyard Kipling. I, I hope I said his name right. In, in some of his books, they add some of that into this Jungle Book, right? So like the storytelling's not bad. Um, I like the creative choice of having the the massive King Louis that he's not an ape, he's like a something else, some kind of prehistoric ape. He's like freaking massive. I thought that was really cool, right? But here's my issue and why I think this movie is bad. It's really because of the CGI animals, okay? When you try to have these realistic looking animated animals, when in the original version they were like drawn cartoons, this is the problem. The way that humans emote is with our eyes. We have very, we have very emotive eyes, right? Lots of white space so that we can do lots of fun things with our eyeballs, right? And show lots of crazy emotions with them. And when you animate an animal, you can make them have more human eyes and expressions, right? So that they can emote like a human does. But then when you do this sort of hyper-realistic, a computer animated animal, all of a sudden you completely lose the expression in their eyes. And that's where this movie fails for me, because you have Mowgli, who's the human character, but all the other characters that you that you meet are animals, and they just look so dead and soulless to me. And that's what makes this movie bad and boring, is that majority of the characters that you're looking at do not emote with anything but their voice, and I freaking hate it. Like, I hate watching that. It's just boring. So that's why I think this movie is bad, even though it has some decent elements in it. Yeah, I agree. I think that also... Um... Okay, so, like, you're when you're watching movies, especially when it's a Disney movie, I don't think we can be unbiased, right? And so the story of a lost boy who is being taken care of about animals and wants to discover who he is, is done so much better in Tarzan than it's done in the Jungle Book. Oh, burn, uh, but true. <laughs> so like In the Disney like, versions of these two, right? We're yeah, not commenting the, on the original stories. Yeah, 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 no. Uh, on the Disney versions of these two, the plots are extremely similar. Um, and I, for me, am like, I liked Tarzan better and all this movie made me do is want to watch Tarzan. And I agree with you while like the scenery and the CGI there was beautiful. Uh, the animals are, yeah, the, they don't. They're dead inside. Um, they're dead inside. The animals are dead inside. And it doesn't yeah. matter what actor you have playing a terrifying tiger. Uh, if the tiger is, looking dead inside not even idris alba can make me feel scared of it right exactly uh, even though whereas in the in the I original movie him. like shere khan's terrifying in the original movie yeah. he's scary yeah uh and he's supposed to be scary like yeah. he's supposed to be this big huge bad guy uh and then you have also um ka who's being played by scarlett johansson Mm -hmm. And she, she also didn't, like, she wasn't able, the two villains even fell short. So you not only have, like, these, these, uh, these animals that are supposed to be, like, protecting Mowgli and caring about him that feel dead inside, but then you have villains who don't feel threatening. Mm -hmm. Um, and I wish Disney had learned its lesson that not to use animals in live, and not to use CGI animals. Oh, they didn't because they did it two more times. We're going to get yeah, to that. There, but like, that's the most frustrating part about all of this. Yes. Like, it's I just, it's just monkey, bad. I agree. The monkey is scarier. Uh, the reason for that, though, is that because it was, uh, it was Christopher Walken. And I think he is the, uh, 
the what's gonna call it the uh the exception to the rule i'm pretty sure christopher walking could just make anyone feel alive again um but that's my own personal opinion i mean you know you're right like um like christopher walken's king louis is um is like the one moment of joy that you might feel while yeah. watching this the the one moment of wonder and amazement throughout the entire movie that's the only part where you might feel some feelings <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, speaking uh, of which, if y'all want to see some, if y'all want to see some actual animals, we've got we've got lady sleeping on the bed. I can turn on the baby cam if someone wants that. Do the channel point redeem, and we'll turn that on for you guys can see some actual animals that are cute and and emote like animals instead of trying to look like animals while emoting like humans. And it doesn't work. It looks guys, bad. I, guys, I gotta tell you, me visiting Cam, me visiting Kendra. Oh my gosh, Karen! I know your name. The name. I know, but you're out. reading the thing. You're reading the thing. Me visiting. <laughs> Kendra, uh, Karen did it again, uh, has made me just want a kitten more because her kittens are so adorable. Oh, my God. <laughs> See the babies. Thank you, Kendra. Yes, thank you. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit more on that. Um, so cute. Let's make that a little bit bigger. I'm going to crop it down, too. But there we go. So, yeah. Um, I don't know. And maybe it's, and maybe it's partly also because I spend a lot of time around animals that I can like recognize exactly what's so bad about the way that these are done in these live action movies. But yeah, it's just like, it's real bad. You know, it's real bad. I also think like, I get, again, saying that we can't, because we're coming in from knowing these are remakes and having an idea what the original is, we can't come in unbiased and we can mm -hmm. only compare it to compare it to the original mm -hmm. uh which is what we're doing in the show which is fine yep. uh but we know what animals look like when they're alive because of that we understand what these are animals are supposed to be doing these movies don't resonate with kids and haven't made success or staples or classics within you know modern day homes mm -hmm. because kids also know that these don't look alive like they yeah. don't relate to them in any sort of way well, even if they like the movie, it's not going to stick with them the way that the Disney Renaissance movies can stick with you or the way that older Disney movies can stick with you. Exactly. Um, so, yeah, definitely, for sure. So even well, if the kid liked the Jungle Book when they saw it, are they going to ask to rewatch it a year later? Probably not, you know? Probably not. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it, do, it, didn't, it didn't make it classic. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Wow. All right. Next one. Next one. We're going back. We're going to a sequel, which is Alice Through the Looking Glass. Okay. Uh, which I felt was trying to like, I, I think it belongs in the, ooh. Are you contemplating? I think, it, I think give it, it we can, you can give your reasoning and then we'll decide a category. I, yeah, the reason why, well, I think that this is important. I think it's it's bad, but it's also a crash grab is because it's grabbing our cash in two places, right? It's a remake or it's trying and to a sell sequel. itself as a remake <laughs> and a sequel mm -hmm. and not a good one at that because yeah. it's also based off of The Looking Glass, which has nothing to do with the actual movie. So nope. not only is it trying to like bank on a remake, because these are familiar stories. We're trying to get the classic in here. It's not necessarily about just getting the Alice in Wonderland fans from the first one, but it's also trying to hit that nostalgia mm -hmm. by bringing back all of these characters in an unfamiliar way. It is a sequel and it's trying to be like, and we're doing the next series in the book, but it's not doing the next series in the book. It's totally and, not. And so while this movie is kind of entertaining and is as beautiful as the first one, mm -hmm. I think it's just a cash grab. I couldn't help but feel like it was just trying to get money out of me. Yep. So at this point in the Disney remake, um, you know, timeline that we've been going through, right? At this point, like the ball is rolling down the hill, right? Like they had huge success with Cinderella. Jun Jungle Book did okay. But you know, it's it's the fourth one of these that they've tried to make. So they weren't expecting anything amazing. You know, they weren't expecting to hit as, as good as Maleficent and Cinderella and Alice in Wonderland did. But it's too late. They have seen success, big success now with three out of four of these movies. And so like, it's just, it's rolling, it's rolling, it's well, rolling, right? Yeah, and, and in between Cinderella and Looking Glass, because of that rolling momentum, they also then greenlit three other remakes. Yeah. That wasn't Alice in Wonderland. 
Yep. Um, I think that they, I think what's next is uh, they did Beauty and the Beast. They had mm -hmm. greenlit Beauty and the Beast. They had greenlit Aladdin and the Lion King. And yep. then we would see movies in between those that were greenlit and, or some sort of remake. Yeah, but they greenlit all three of those. Like so when they saw how good Cinderella did. Yeah. And then, and then we'll talk about Beauty and the Beast in a second. But right after Beauty and the Beast, uh, which is shortly after Alice in the Looking Glass, then the rest were greenlit. So yep. like this is a ball that is, because we have to remember it takes three years to make a movie. Yep. So all of a sudden, like the ball is rolling down because all of this stuff is in production and all of a sudden it's also tanking. <laughs> yes. So I put this movie in the very bad category because okay. I agree with everything that you're saying, but the costuming and set design still are on point in this movie. Okay. And I could watch it muted and be entertained. <laughs> but okay. it is very bad. It is very and also bad. Anne Hathaway. I, I guess I can't put Anne Hathaway in the why even category. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Most other people I could, but yeah. not Anne Hathaway. Yeah, and I mean, this movie, it's like... <sighs> If they hadn't tried to pretend it was somehow going to be through the looking glass, then I'd have more forgiveness for it. If it wasn't like trying to also be just a straight up sequel to what we saw before, I might have some forgiveness for it. You know, maybe if it, if instead they had tried to make like a new Alice story or something, you know, with the same cast, you know, there's there's ways they could have done this. They could have positioned this movie that would have made me have more forgiveness for it. But because they positioned it as a sequel to their first one, plus Through the Looking Glass, you know, it, it plus, you know, part of the remake and pulling things from the original cartoon, like, like when the way they marketed this movie, you thought you were going to get all of that in one movie and then you watch it and it's just, it's not, it's not any of that. It's just like a straight kind of bad sequel to the Alice in Wonderland they made a few years prior. Yeah. So they marketed this movie all wrong. Set up wrong expectations. Totally. It was real bad. Uh, but I agree. The costuming is beautiful. There's a lot of beautiful CGI. Mm -hmm. um, there are some really interesting, fantastical animals in it. Yeah. Uh, that have really good CGI with it. So I, I will I will move mine to the very bad because I agree. Yeah. It just, it felt like a one-two punch that I was just like, man. God, it does. They're, they're really taking everything from me here. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they just, they marketed it all wrong. If they had just told us this is just a sequel to the movie we released a few years ago, then I don't think I would have felt as negatively about it as I did. I agree, and I also, but I also think that it wouldn't belong on this list. True. Um, because then it wouldn't be a remake. Mm -hmm. um, and, and like we said, there are some, I, I think that there are some, I have some of these on this list I have a really tough time calling a remake. Uh, we're we're gonna get to another one here shortly, but like, yeah, I agree. That's another one, right? It's so it's right. So far, we've gone through Maleficent and Looking Glass, Alice in Wonderland. That I'm just like, I don't even they they're completely different. Yep. Uh, By the but, way, the the way that movies were chosen to be put on this versus not is from a, oh, the Wikipedia page, like the Wikipedia yes. page for the Disney live action remakes. If I, I, the way I saw it is like Wikipedia, the people on like the actual Wikipedia, not a, not like a Disney fan wiki, but the actual Wikipedia, like they're real picky and they will edit each other to death. So I figured if it made it on there, it qualifies. Like and I let I, them do my brain work for me. <laughs> I understand the logic of all of this. The, yeah. And I agree with it. But for me personally, yes. like there is a difference between as we discussed, there was a difference between the story of Maleficent and the story of Cinderella yes. and how those two movies were developed. Absolutely. And I think that that's important because I also think that when we see the list, we'll see that there are higher quality movies um, on different places. Uh-huh. <laughs> because of <laughs> Okay. I love this conversation about Beauty and the Beast going on in the chat, by the way. I'm not commenting because I'm holding my hot takes well, for this. Well, the next is Beauty and the Beast. Oh, okay. Okay, so I'm not going to I'm not going to touch it yet. I'm not going to touch it yet. Okay. Um, do you want to go first, Landon, or do you want me to go first? I can. Okay, go for it. Um, go go. I enjoyed Beauty and the Beast live action for what it was. Um, I liked it because it did the same thing as Cinderella, which is that it added some context. It changed some things. I also appreciated that it used some music from the Broadway version. So it was bringing in all of these versions of Beauty and the Beast. I also loved Beauty and the Beast as a kid. 
So I found it for me where this would be, it would be in the somewhat entertaining because I okay. don't think that it, there were great choices. I love Emma Watson. I will watch Emma Watson in anything. Emma Watson should not have been Belle. <laughs> um, there, I, I enjoyed it. I think the CGI was beautiful. I think the music, except for some people singing, was really enjoyable and beautiful. Uh, I think that this is also the only remake. Oh no, we have Aladdin on here. But this was the first remake that actually kept songs in it, which I appreciated um, and was like, oh, this is actually a remake. And I think that they, they held pretty true. It's not the best thing ever, but I'm not angry at it. There are there are remakes that I'm angry at, and this is not one of them. Mm, mm-hmm. Okay, <laughs> so Beauty and the Beast is very near and dear and special to me. So I really wanted to like this movie. And the first time I watched it, I didn't have a bad time, because there are certain elements, like you said, Landon, that I really enjoy. Um, Dan Stevens singing um, Evermore, for example. Excellent. Absolutely yes. excellent. And that was an original, Beautiful. and I just wanted to clarify, that's an original song. That was yeah, that's one from, of the songs from the Broadway. That right. was original to this movie. Excellent, excellent song. It's so good, and he's so good at it. And But then there's like little things that bother me, right? Like they edit his voice instead of just letting him sing the song. I wish we would have heard his actual rendition of the song instead of the auto-tuned, messed mm-hmm. with, edited version that we got. Um, also... I feel like a lot of the music is very off in this movie, and I didn't know why when I first watched it. And so, and I, I've watched it this one a couple of times, actually, because um, there are certain elements I like, like Dan Stevens is Evermore, and there's another one I'll talk about in a second. But there's there's certain things that are that are off about the music for me. But then there's certain songs that just absolutely kill it. Like um, Gaston's song, not Gaston that LeFou Le sings, but the actual yeah. song that Gaston sings when they're going to yeah. get the beast, the kill the beast, right? Oh my god, the best version of that song ever. Like, yeah. Luke Evans is a fucking powerhouse. He's so good. He's so, so good. Like, I will listen to that song and get chills. Like, no matter how many times I listen to it, it is amazing. Okay? And and so this is the thing that I learned eventually. So I eventually saw um, Sideways who is a YouTuber who talks about like uh, music and stuff. And he has a video on the music in Beauty and the Beast. And based on his research, what he explains is that because there had been this push for hearing like real performances instead of studio performances in movies, which is true, that that was a push around the time. And I feel like is still kind of the, the, fo- the in vogue thing to do, right? They did record everyone, you know, singing on set. But the problem is you do lots of takes and then you end up cutting it together with that. Plus, you might add in a line or two from the studio recording if things just didn't sound quite right. And so you get this incredibly inconsistent singular performance. And that's why every other song I didn't mention but those two sucks ass in this movie. It's because they're totally stitched together. It's bad. I disagree. I think it's bad. I think Gaston, the song that LeFou does sing, is immaculate. Okay, you're right. That actually, that one actually is good. But you know why Luke Evans and um and whoever it is that plays LeFou, what's that guy's name? Anyway, uh, it's lost actor. Hold on, I'm good. Yeah, yeah. It. You know why those Josh two Gad. are? Yeah, yeah. Josh Gad. You know why those two are good and Evan Watson sucks? It's because those two have a lot of stage experience. So they yeah. knew how to practice their stuff and give a good singular performance over and over and over again. Because that's what you have to do on the stage. You have to give the same performance every single night over and over and over again. But when you're doing, when you're a, a film actor primarily, that's not what you, you do. You have a little slightly different performance every time. So they have something to cut together into what works best. Well, also, like, traditionally, musicals are not sung on, like, on, on set. No, musicals are filmed or are, are recorded with the live record the recording within studio so they can do all of the edits and yeah. then filmed with that overlay. Now you might be an actress might be singing on set to keep up with everything, but she's not really singing. audio that is used. Yeah, so I truly believe that this was a mistake of the director. And yes, that choice, then necessarily the movie overall. 
I think that if I would have dealt okay with Emma Watson's auto tune, if it the auto tune had been consistent because they yes. filmed the video version, I would have been okay with Dan Stevens' um, slight inconsistencies with the voice or the auto tune as well. If that had stuck to the auto tune, mm-hmm. right? It, like I think that that was a huge mistake. I agree, and that's why I put it in bad. So we're we're differing. This is the first time we're, we're really differing. It in bad? I put it in bad. It just oh, it's no. it just doesn't bring it doesn't bring me the joy. It doesn't bring I, me the joy. I watched the original and I feel so but much watched more. It, okay, but I'm gonna argue with that. You've watched it several times. Which I've watched it three times. I watched it three times. A few times, which is somewhat entertaining. <laughs> I disagree. To me, that every time I watch it, I find more things that are wrong about it. That's every movie. <laughs> That's not true. There are some movies where I don't care about their flaws as much. But this is the thing, and you and you said this earlier, we cannot view these movies in a bubble. We must view them as compared to the original animated version. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, okay, comparatively to the original version, I'm also going to say I think that they improved uh, and made it slightly less Stockholm, which I appreciate. And I love Stockholm, he's, but, they but he's did. meaner to her. He's meaner to her in this Not version. Meaner to Yet her. Oh he my throws God. the snow. He throws a snowball at her and knocks her down and does not go to check on her. That was so mean. <laughs> she like falls down. She could have been really hurt. That happens. <laughs> that was, just the way you said that was that was so mean. <laughs> it was. It's so mean. He's definitely not meaner in this one. Disagree. Go watch it. Go watch the OG version back to back with this version and just the way the things think that the they add in make him meaner. I don't think the beast is meaner in this one. I think they actually gave him some backstory. They actually gave <clears throat> Belle some backstory. I really appreciated that compared, again, it's that time. They were able to expand upon some things. They modernized the themes. They did the same things with Cinderella and I found it just as successful. We can have different rankings. Yeah. But for me, I mean, I also, and I understand like comparatively comparing it to the first one, it's better than Alice in Wonderland's remake for me. It's not in the actually good oh. category, but it is better than Alice in Wonderland's oh, uh, because I see. it's actually entertaining to watch. And I like the songs. Mm. I guess the other thing, the other thing is just, as I really, really love the original Beauty and the Beast, like really, really love it. Now there is one other thing in this movie that actually brought me a lot of joy, I will have to say, is when all of a sudden at the end, you see Mr. Potts. I don't know Mr. why. Potts. Yeah, it's like it's like Mr. Potts. I was like, oh yeah, Mr. I, Potts. <laughs> I appreciated that they added context that even the Broadway show fails to have. I don't as think you need like, it. Why do, do people not know that this castle exists? Who cares? Sorry. Um, this is this is where I'm I'm such a stan of the original movie. I'm sorry. Like I'm not this is this is the problem. Like I just I can't look at it objectively because I love the original so much. Who cares? I don't need that other context. I do. I don't. <laughs> it's kind of like it's kind of like how did Cinderella fall in love with the prince in one night? I care about that. I needed the extra context. Yeah. Well, you know what? The uh, I'm not in love with the OG Cinderella, so that's why I liked it in that one, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh man all right so okay so obviously you yeah. know what this tells me though landon you know we what? got the request during the mulan episode to do a beauty and the beast versus beauty and the beast we obviously oh, we obviously have to do it we obviously have to do it i we mean just this conversation to alone proves it to me we got to do it all right all right then we'll move on okay we'll talk about it all right the next one is christopher robin which I, and i'll let you dig in this fun first because i've had first thoughts on a few of them but sure. i do want to say that this is the other one i was referring to that i don't think is an exact this and, and one more is an exact remake. I would not yeah. consider this a remake if it wasn't on the wiki list. Exactly. I agree. Because um, it's not really. They really, it's really a totally different story. So for those of you guys that haven't seen it, because basically no one watched this movie. Um, <laughs> it did really awful. Um, so basically Christopher Robin is all grown up now and he's a working stiff and he's trying his best to uh, to support his family. And, but he has a daughter who he's neglecting. Um, but then he he remembers all of his friends in the Hundred Acre Woods, and they teach him how to have fun again. Well, that's this movie. Um, it's cute. You sound so like, and they do this thing, and I'm like, as if we as adults have never felt like, oh my god, we are becoming boring adults. We need to remember our childhood. 
True. That's what this movie is. But it, this movie does the same thing that a lot of other of this type of story does that bothers me, is they never address how, like, when Christopher Robin, towards the end, um, like, totally jeopardizes his career, potentially. Like, okay, so, like, now I guess the family's gonna starve and no one's mad at him for doing this. Like, why is no one mad at him for potentially jeopardizing his entire career so that his family starves? I don't I don't get it. And these movies never address that. They all that and this happens in every single one of that type of story. I'm not a huge fan of this type of story because it's just to me it's not real. It's not true to life. <laughs> oh, man. So I didn't mind Christopher Robbins. It's certainly not my favorite. Um it's I wouldn't fine. Call it a bad movie. Um I I appreciated the message. I recognize that this is not a kids movie. No. Like I think that that's the other thing too is the target audience. The target audience for so many of these are to target the adults who grew up with Disney and their children. Yeah. Uh Christopher Robin doesn't. It says fuck the children. <laughs> like It does. It's really literally it's literally made for millennials. It's made for the millennials. It's it gives you know what it gives me? It gives me a slightly less version of the same thing of Steve coming back from Blue's Clues and telling me he's yes. Uh, yes. Like, don't get me wrong. I teared up. I'm crying. I was crying and you were crying. Like, everyone should cry at Steve telling us that he's proud of us. Oh, my God. But, my but, heart. <laughs> but it's that same <laughs> feeling where it was like, hey, adult life is hard. You feel like you're dropping the ball on all of these places. Rem- like, it, it was almost like asking. It, it was. This is not what it was at all. But it. It felt like almost Disney being like, I know you're angry at us. I know that you're an adult now and you think we're not cool, but like still love us. <laughs> I guess if you're viewing it in the context of all of these. Of these that we're yeah. Um, and, I, and I appreciated this. I also appreciate, you know, Ian McGre- McGregor. No. Ewan McGregor. Thank you, Ewan McGregor. His performance uh, is really good in this, by the way, if you're an Ewan McGregor fan. I, I think um, Moshi says that, she, that it was, <laughs> it made you feel sad. It did, absolutely, especially if you felt like Christopher. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I think also like, oh, this is actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I feel like this is more of a remake for the second Peter Pan than it is for Winnie the Pooh because it's oh nothing gosh, to kind do of. the original Winnie the Pooh stories and has everything to do with like an adult version coming back and revisiting his world and trying to like save his friends from before. Yeah. Uh, so I, I really appreciated this movie. I understand like it was never going to be a box office hit. They tried to advertise the shit out of this movie. No one saw it. It was never going to be successful. Um, <clears throat> I appreciated it. It's somewhat entertaining. It's it's not bad. It's just not great. Yeah, I agree. It's not bad. It's just, it's not for me. I don't like this kind of story because they always leave out certain realities and they try to pretend like you don't have to have a job, you know, to live. Um, but you do. But like and so that's many, why people do these things. So many movies do that. So oh, many yeah. movies, so many TV shows. I mean, think of like, it's like even suspension of reality of like for like a TV show like Gossip Girl to exist. Oh, yeah. Like, even though they're all rich, none of these, none of these bars would actually be serving these 16 year olds. No! Like, so it's like suspended <laughs> reality for a second on stuff like that. Yeah, but it's, it's, I mean, if you like Ewan McGregor, it's a very good Ewan McGregor performance. If you like um, Winnie the Pooh, it is, it is very true to all of the Winnie the Pooh characters that are in it they all are portrayed you know exactly as you remember them um and i think the the way that they animate them is actually kind of cute where they really do look like stuffed animals um so they didn't try to make them look like animals they tried to make them look like stuffed animals and they felt almost alive because of that yeah it's cute um also i recognize that i like to make myself feel sad so maybe that's also why I like this movie, uh, is because I I like to be an emotional masochist. So yeah. it is. No, I agree with Mochi, and it does. There's parts of this movie that make you feel really sad watching it. So if that's not your jam, then maybe you should skip it. But if you like to feel sad, then yeah, yeah I think this movie is worth watching. Even though I think the plot is dumb and it annoys me, but th- that type of plot annoys me every time I see it. That's not unique to this movie. Fair. All right, ready for the next one? Next one. Mary Poppins Returns. Oh, I didn't put, that's not on my list. Oh, I don't have shit. a graphic Sorry, for I it. I thought that was on your list. Never mind. No. It well, it's because it's not, it's not, the original is not animated. Oh, that's true. Didn't even yeah. think of that. Sorry. I thought that, I thought I had heard that earlier. Never mind. Nope. J-K-L-L Dumbo. Dumbo. Oh my God. 
Uh, here's the thing. Dumbo is just going to go uh, into the why even is this movie a thing? Because yeah. I hated the original and I couldn't even sit through the animated one. Oh, uh, so you've never fully seen the original? I hated the original. I watched it probably twice when I was a kid. Wow. I hated the re- original so much. Uh, and I couldn't I couldn't sit through the sequel like, or the, mm. the remake. The I couldn't remake. sit through it. Mm. I didn't care. I okay, was- well, I'll tell you then. I'll tell you then, um, it's worse than the original, by far. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I feel like this movie, this movie definitely goes in the final category because whether you liked or disliked the original, it's still hella bad. Like, if you liked the original, this movie shits all over the original. If you disliked the original, then this movie is incredibly boring because the story is stupid and incoherent. It, the things that they add make no sense. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. instead of, basically what they do is, instead of having, like, his mouse friend, so in the original, right, he has this mouse friend that's kind of like his Jiminy Cricket, right, that's helping him out. Right. And then, in this remake, instead of that, he gets these two kids that are his friends that help him out. But, of course, because they're humans, they have to get, like, their own backstory and stuff. And so, like, there's this girl that loves science, and then, but then she, and, and like, that's like a point of contention, but she never gets to actually really do science. They pretend like she's doing science and trying to help the elephant fly, but it doesn't really work out that way. And then like, the other thing that's really weird about this remake is that um, they have, uh, they have like the, the villain who runs the circus, but then later there's an even worse, more capitalist villain. And it turns out that the guy running the circus is actually a good guy. It's very incoherent and weird. Um, uh, the way that they redo the pink elephant scene, n- not very creative. It's kind of dumb. Um, they do cut out the racist crows, so that's cool. Um, but uh, cut out the racism. Uh, you know, they and they just pretend that that just doesn't even ha- that the original Dumbo just doesn't even have any racism in it, even though the original Dumbo is incredibly racist. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, but it's just it's just it's just bad because a lot of a lot of the Dumbo story is really about um, abuse and neglect via capitalism, and you know Disney can't show that that's a reality that happens, and so the remake just ends up being a movie that makes no sense. You mean they can't they can't show that they're the problem? Yeah, and it's dumb because like it's mostly in this in in Dumbo it's mostly about animal abuse, which most people can get on board that animal abuse is bad, but like they add in all these human characters and. Anyway, it's just weird. Don't waste your time on it. I did, and I regret. I, I regret. I want those two hours I, back, but I did I it for tried. you guys. I did it for I you guys. Really, I really tried for the purpose of this stream too, so I knew what to talk about, and I was just I I couldn't do it. Like I ju- and I knew I was coming into it with the fact that I hated Bambi, so it was not a good place. Dumbo, to did you Dumbo, hate it, Dumbo? Bambi. Yeah, talking about Bambi in the chat, but also Bambi. Oh, uh, I feel like that would happen if they redid Bambi. Yeah. A Bambi remake would be awful, probably in the same way that the Dumbo remake is awful. Yeah. Well, also because when you're having CGI animals, if those are the main characters... Oh, wait. We'll get to that. Hold on. Okay. First, before we get to No, but they do it again. This is actually... So there's four, actually, that they do it in, because it happens in Dumbo. Dumbo himself, poorly animated and soulless looking, just like the animals in Jungle Book. Even though Dumbo doesn't talk, he's like a real, for real elephant in this, so they don't try to pretend he's human. But he doesn't emote ever. Which is so stupid too, because like, and and like I said, if the main characters are animals and you can't do animals right, why the fuck are those the movies you're choosing? And and we'll talk, and, and obviously like they knew that or else they wouldn't have added two kids in there. Yeah. They knew that they had to add humans in there because they couldn't successfully- Because of the style. Properly. Yeah, yeah. And and again, that happens later too. We'll talk about those those other movies as well. But um, yeah, no, it's it was a big mistake. It's very bad. Did not like, don't like it anyway. But also the remake, it didn't need a remake. Yeah, and I can't even tell you like one single thing I enjoyed in this movie. Also, it wasn't a successful like a hugely successful movie before. Yeah. So okay, shall we move on to Aladdin? Yes. <laughs> Okay, Aladdin's the next on the list. I think we have differing opinions on this one, too. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, you want to start? Yeah, I'll go. Okay, so I love Aladdin. It's amazing. Um, in second grade, 
we always had this thing that the second grade class did every year where they would do this like show at the end of the year. It was like a um, physical fitness show. Basically you would do like jumps and you would do hula hoops and like play with ribbons. Anyway, it was a whole big old deal. Um, second grade always did it. So for second grade, in my year coming through, we had Aladdin themed. So I literally had like this Aladdin style Arabian little costume. It was pink. It was gorgeous. It was beautiful. I like Aladdin. I think it's amazing. I love Robin Williams. Um, I think the story in Aladdin is just is really beautiful. It's really fun. It's a good it's a really good movie. So I say all of this to help set up why I really dislike this movie because it's it's not that objectively bad, but there's a particular change in this movie that really makes me dislike it. And that is what they do to Jasmine's character. So in the original movie, Jasmine is this naive princess. She she wants outside of the walls, but she really doesn't know what life is like out there. She doesn't understand the system in which she lives, right? Like, um, you know, Aladdin, Aladdin shows her the whole world, right? Like when she when she's first introduced, she's like, you know, she's the bird in the cage. She doesn't understand what's going on. Um, but she's a nice girl, right? Like she, she, she takes the apple to give to those kids, right? And she doesn't understand why that's stealing and why that's bad, right? But in the remake, she can't just be a nice and naive lady. She's got to be woke too. There, it's like they're almost purposely trying to fix their mistakes. Oh, ah, okay. But here's why I hate it. So they change things about they change things about her character. So like the apple scene in particular is quite different in this remake because they got to show that she's a princess for the people. Like she's woke and she gets it right. Um, stealing is not always immoral. These kids are hungry. People shouldn't have to go hungry. Like she actually makes that point. But then at the end, when they have won the day and she is ruling the country. She does fuck all to fix the problems, but she has the power to fix them now. And she knows that they're problems because they showed us that in the beginning of the movie. So now her character goes from this really like cool character who is who is naive and has this opportunity to learn about the world and is, is starting on that journey to this character that's already finished that journey and then decides, well, fuck it, whatever. I'm the leader now, bitch. So anyway, because of that reason... Also, Will Smith just cannot hold a candle to Robin Williams. I'm sorry. It's, okay. His performance is fine, but it's no Robin Williams, and I can't stop it's, comparing it. I don't think anything could top Robin Williams. No. Like, that is the main problem with this movie. Yeah. Is that they tried so hard to top Robin Williams, mm -hmm. and Will Smith tried his ass off, and I think he successfully made, for this generation, an entertaining genie. I as agree long with that. As they had no prior knowledge to Robin Williams. Yeah, if you never saw the original, there's nothing really that wrong with this movie except Jasmine's I, character. Okay, that that's wrong no matter what. But <laughs> Jasmine is a little is a little heavy handed. A little, um, a little, <laughs> a lot heavy handed. Mm -hmm. Also, they took away the se all sort of sexiness from Jafar. Uh, You're right. No he's not sexy sex. anymore. He's not sexy in this movie at all. He was yeah. the original. There was no sexiness about him, which I understand is probably more a me problem than, <laughs> than like a Disney problem. But it's true though. Jafar was sexy. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> he was hot in the original. He's not hot in this. I needed a hot Jafar. Yeah. And this Jafar was not hot. Um, <laughs> Kendra's on your side. She says it is an objective problem. <laughs> <laughs> it is it's 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 us it's it's our issues it's they they did not try to make jafar hot yet so many people found jafar hot he uh, was though emoji i totally agree with you though about jasmine's song it was really good i like jasmine's song i'm talking oh, more about like her. i'm talking more about how they decided to make her aware of the problems in the world they didn't need to add that they didn't need to add that and it totally have, ruins her character i would have loved if she learned more yeah. If they showed the process of her learning about mm -hmm. these problems, mm -hmm. because they hinted towards it in the original, but if they saw that she was a naive prince who, princess who just wanted outside her castle walls, which by the way, the exact same character as, as Aladdin, like mm -hmm. the, that was the beautiful thing about Aladdin yeah. and Jasmine is that they only understood each other because they understood exactly what the other was feeling. They yeah. wanted, they were stuck in a life that neither of them wanted. 
Um, and and if they had played that up and had Jasmine naturally learn something the way Aladdin learned something in the beginning or learned something in the original, it would have been a more fuller story and char- and Jasmine would have been a more developed character. Yeah, all they would have really had um, to do was add in a little bit at the end of her saying like, you know, should we still even have the Sultanate? We have all of these poor people. What are we going to do to help them? You know, but she doesn't. It's like it's a total, totally forgotten. Yeah, it's completely forgotten. Um, they they try to make her like real woke, and and she sh- she shouldn't be. Or uh, like, she but it just doesn't make sense. It, it, princess, it doesn't make sense. A princess who is locked in a tower, like mm-hmm. locked in her castle, she should have no clue. Yeah. Um, also, I am not going to lie. Will Smith hitting on uh her hand like her maid like her her uh handmaiden like i was like disney that's a real big age gap (laughs) (laughs) are you i understand that we are trying to sell that the genie is immortal and that that age gap is worse than will smith hitting on someone in their early 20s yeah i don't know i have to i have to agree with kendra i thought that part was pretty entertaining i liked it (laughs) Hey, Brenny, how's it going? <laughs> I don't mind age gaps. That's not what I'm critiquing here. <laughs> what I'm critiquing here is that this is still like it just is a, it's a little it's a little weird. Uh, you feel like it's, it's not the right tone, I right? See, maybe it's because like I see uh, Will Smith is like a dad figure. He could he's old enough to be the cool dad, and the person who was her hand her uh right hand woman uh Mm -hmm. could have been my age and I was just like this would be weird if my dad was hitting on my friends like maybe that was just like the (laughs) perspective I was coming at it with but it was a little it was a little uh shocking I was a little shocked that Disney went there Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) 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 oh gosh more compelling ship than Aladdin and Jasmine um, can't disagree, Kendra. Can't disagree. I Although I hardcore, I'm definitely, either. I'm definitely on the Aladdin um, and Jasmine ship train in the in the original animated one. Oh yeah, but there was no chemistry in this one. Yeah, in this also, one, not like, so much. Also, like Aladdin um, was really stiff in this one. He wasn't yeah. charming. He wasn't. He wasn't Aladdin to me. He was someone who was trying to like. There was no chemistry with yeah. Al- like not even between the two characters. I'm talking with Aladdin as the character. Like yeah, the, I did not like who they chose the actor. I don't think he portrayed Aladdin properly. I don't like what they were trying to do with Aladdin. They kind of made him pants. Don't a like little it. bit. He's a little bit pants in um, this. <laughs> and so I and I love Aladdin. Uh, like, and there was an opportunity. I just would like to say that Disney, there was an opportunity for you to go up an entire step in this ranking order. And I know that my rank is really the only important rank of everything. Um, you had the opportunity of going up an entire step by just putting proud of your boy in it. And you didn't, you failed. Mm. Me. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That would have actually helped. Cause it was such a tragedy that that was cut from the original movie, you know, such a tragedy. <laughs> that is my favorite song. Mm-hmm. Uh, if no one knows proud of your boy, I'm linking it in the, I'm linking it in the thing. Oh God. It's amazing. It's so good. Uh, okay. Something but- happened to the sound alerts. I'm so sorry, guys. I'm trying to fix it. And I'll play your sound alerts. No, you, you're good. What I do really appreciate <laughs> is... Um, there we go. That because it is a live action, the cast actually had to be people of color. True. Like, ooh, they, ooh. they actually had to, like, have people of color play these... Play these characters, so... Yep. They couldn't just cast white people because of being voice actors. So that was that was a plus. That was um, a plus. So, okay. So where would you actually rank Aladdin? Like, what do you, where do you think it falls in the rankings? Because I feel like I feel very mixed about this movie. I, okay. I love the original so much that it mm-hmm. hurts. I know they're two separate movies. But it hurts to think about this belongs in the very bad category. <laughs> uh, it hurts me to put anything Aladdin in the very bad category, even though I think that that might be where it belongs. It belongs I, somewhere between very bad and bad. 
Yeah, I agree. Um, I, that's where I'm kind of going between very bad and bad. Because, I mean, it's not that it's not entertaining. It's more like the, the things that they chose to the thing that they chose to change really messed up the movie for me. And this is like the trend, right? Like they changed, a, they changed a bunch of stuff in Cinderella and people liked the changes. They changed a bunch of stuff in Beauty and the Beast and people felt mixed about the changes. They changed a bunch of stuff in Aladdin. Now people are starting to really dislike the changes and get tired of it, you know? <laughs> I'm, I'm struggling too because I'm like... I'm I'm trying to remember that this is not the order in which I would choose to watch these movies mm -hmm. because I'm like I would choose to watch Aladdin this version of Aladdin over Jungle Book any day in fact oh, yeah. I would I'd be willing to watch this version of Aladdin over Christopher Robin and Alice in Wonderland however it's not a somewhat entertaining movie it's simply the nostalgia of it yeah uh yeah. okay if they had just had proud of your boy you know aladdin you could have been somewhat entertaining <laughs> instead of bad or very bad if you had just put in proud of your boy then you at least i would have had that i wouldn't feel guilty about putting you in the bad category you would have just been okay there yeah uh okay i'm gonna put him in the bad category i i find that if i am able to separate my expectations of the movie versus what the actual outcome was I find that that Aladdin belongs in bad. Okay. I think my expectations set it way too far up for it to fall. It's like how I feel about Beauty and the Beast. Yes. Like yeah. I, I, I feel That's why like I can't put Beauty and the Beast in someone entertaining, even though there are elements of that movie that I find yeah. incredibly entertaining. My expectations are just too high. I, I totally understand that. Mm -hmm. All right. <sighs> All right. Talk about this next one. What is the next one? It's lying. Can, can we just put a word? <laughs> so remember how I remember how we keep complaining about soulless animals. This entire movie is soulless animated animals. It's such a good movie. The original. The original is so good. Why did they do this? Like I don't. Okay, so this is the big thing I don't understand about the Lion King remake. We already have an excellent live action Lion King. It's called the Broadway version. Why the fuck? Did they not just make the Broadway version? And you could have even had the bad, badly animated lions and whatever, but just have the exact Broadway version, the story, the songs from the Broadway, and just do the shitty animation over it. And it would have been so much better than this garbage that we got. I'm it's bad. Crying. Um, I'm actually crying. Uh, it is so bad. Um, this is why I have also, tissues at my desk, which you know now. <laughs> also, uh, like we had it's still not a live action lion king because mm -hmm. there's nothing live about it no it's still animated it's still animated it's, but just, it's just badly, badly animated, animated. <laughs> um oh we know that, brenny that was that how we that was, was how we introduced the topic we <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh fuck us over right yeah, um, late stage capitalism no. and monopolies for the win. No, this movie is, I, obviously by this time, I had been disappointed by Aladdin. I had been let down by Jungle Book. I was not feeling great after Beauty and the Beast. I hadn't even bothered to watch Dumbo. Uh, I, I loved Cinderella and I loved Maleficent. So I knew there was an opportunity of greatness. I knew there was an opportunity, but I was not feeling good about it. Uh, I was feeling like the chances were slim that per it was getting worse with time, that the movies, the live action remakes were doing worse. But I was like, The Lion King is a classic. They mm -hmm. have to do this right. Mm -hmm. And being able to like, and also I have a love for, I lived in Tanzania for a little while. So I have a love for these kinds of animals. I was really excited to see a live action version of the Serengeti and Tanzania um, I was I was really like there for it and then it just failed on every single level yeah every it's not single. good there's nothing there's nothing good about this movie Beyonce is the only thing good about this movie <laughs> her uh, one song on the soundtrack <laughs> yeah yeah um it's not good I this mean, movie's David not Glover good was, okay David Glover was not bad so oh, Danny, yeah, yeah, yeah. The... Well, no, Danny Glover. I, I mean, I love him though. He, he can do no wrong. No. Oh, sorry. oh, Donald Glover. Um, that's right. 
Um, ever since Community, and, uh, you know, I mean, so he can do no wrong, but I, t- I try to forget he's in this movie, because it's just so god-awful. Well, because the cast is so perfect. Like, this, yeah. this, the unfortunate reality is that it had all the makings of being amazing, and I think that that's why this particular movie was such a letdown, because it really did. It had Beyonce as, novel, as Nala, uh, who can sing her fucking heart out. Mm-hmm. It had Donald Glover, who is an amazing singer, actor, talented person as Simba. James he's Earl funny. Jones, he's he's funny, but this movie's Mufasa. not funny. Oh yeah, he's also funny. Um, yeah. James Earl Jones came back as Mufasa. You have Seth Rogen as fucking Pumbaa. You have John Oliver as Zazu, who is the perfect Zazu in my uh, Opinion. They took the meme too far. They took the meme too far. <laughs> you have Alfred Woodard as uh, Sarabi. You have um, Keegan Michael Key as as one of the um, as one of the uh, hyenas. Love um, him. You have you have John Kenny Kenny, who uh, I only know by like seeing, but from Black Panther as uh, as Rafiki. Like you have this amazing fucking cast of all-star people who I would, this is like the dream cast, right? This is who I would cast if I could for Lion King. You have that. You have promises that all the songs are going to be in. You have people who could actually sing the songs unlike Beauty and the Beast. You had all of the right ingredients. And the problem is, is that the art form that this movie was being done in, which was CGI animation, is not up to snuff. Yeah. You have to watch with your eyes closed. Yeah. And then it's, yeah. and then it's, and then you can get an okay movie, I guess. And no <laughs> kid wants to watch a movie with their eyes closed. It's just so bad. It's so bad because, and the, and they took all the humor out of this movie too. Like the original, um, the original animated version, yes, there's, there, it's known for like the will to be seen, like the tragedy of it, right? But it's actually really funny too. And this movie's not funny. Um, they took out all the humor, but they didn't like put in the drama of like the Broadway version. Like we don't get Shadowlands, you know. Um, so you this movie is like literally, thoughts. yeah. So this movie is literally like the worst parts of of the versions of Lion King with just absolutely horrible CGI over it. And the poor cast, they're trying their hardest, but they're the only good thing in this movie. Yeah. I mean, and, and the script, I mean, here's the thing too, is that like Lion King didn't need a remake. No. The script still holds up. Kids still interact. Like the original animated series or movie. The kids still interact with the themes. Mm -hmm. Kids still connect to it. They still like it. Um, Like like Lion King is one of the movies that affected the millennial generation and also continued to affect this generation. It is still making an impact today. It was one of the few movies in the Renaissance that genuinely did not need to be touched because touching it by it, like the simple act of touching it meant that it was going to be worse. Yep. It didn't need an update on any of the themes like Cinderella nope. might have, or that Maleficent might have. It it just needed, <laughs> sorry, I just saw Kay's idea. I love that. <laughs> oh, which Disney sequels? We could definitely yeah. can't, uh, tackle Disney sequels at some point. Down for Disney sequels. Um, but no, I think that like it just needed to be left alone. Uh, yep. And the only thing that changed, like genuinely, if you look at it side by side, the only thing that changed was the cast, which became superior in my mind. And the fact that they changed how it was animated. Yeah. The script is exactly the same. The songs are exactly the same. It's shot for shot exactly in a lot of areas. Shot for shot. Mm-hmm. I mean, even like, I mean, it's that side by side for uh, Akuna Matata. Yeah, is shocking because it is shot by shot the exact same thing, uh, and it just goes to show that like this style of animation for animals is not working. No, it's not. Good. And it was a mistake. It 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 it's not. It's bad. It's so bad. Yeah, it's so bad. Okay, we only have four left, and um, we're coming up to the last twenty minutes of the stream. Yeah. So we've got the second Maleficent. We've got Cruella, Mulan, Lady and the Tramp. Okay. We would pick up pick oh. up the pace a little bit. Sorry. Well, like no, you're good. Let's do that, Maleficent. Um, okay. Here's, here's the deal with the Maleficent. I understand it was on the list. This is not a sequel. This is no. not. This is not. I mean, it, it's fine. It's a sequel. I mean, it's not a remake. It's a sequel. 
Yeah. Like it's, yeah. it's fine. It's, it doesn't live up to the actually good. It's an entertaining movie to watch. I yep. don't even want to talk about it much because even though it has more to do with Sleeping Beauty than the original does, because it's about the prince and the everything, like mm-hmm. it's so far removed from the original works at this point that it's just a sequel. It is. But if you liked the original Maleficent, it's worth a watch. It's definitely entertaining. There's nothing wrong with this movie, um, but there's nothing really to speak of about it either. Yeah, it's it's a sequel. It's a sequel. It's a really good sequel to a really good movie. So like, it just was never going to live up to the expectations. um, If we ever talk about that sequel, because we'll find out that Disney sequels never do. Um, But But it was it was exactly what you would expect for um, the sequel of Maleficent. But it's not a remake. All right. Karen's favorite. Lady and the Tramp. Okay, I'm going to have to make the sound again. <laughs> okay. I had not watched this movie. So I watched it for this episode. And I have to tell you guys, um, I failed in my duties as as a host of this episode. I have seen all the way through every single one of these movies except Lady and the Tramp. I had to end it halfway through, and I'll tell you why. So in the original movie, it is all from the dog's perspective. Like, all you see of the humans, for the most part, is just, like, legs and ankles, right? That's all you really see. They're just feet. They're They're not characters. They're, like, background, right? They're just there to set the stage. And it's really the animals that are the characters. Um, however, in this remake you actually get perspective from the humans too because they have famous actors playing the humans. So they they show them and they they do things and they interact with each other, not just off-screen voices, not just legs around the animals, right? Like they have, you see in their faces and in their actions and and in what they do, their internal struggles and motivations. And so if you remember the things that happen in Lady and the Tramp, they're not very nice to the animals, which means that Lady and the Tramp, this remake, becomes Animal Abuse the Movie. So I got to the point where Shirley from Community was taking Lady and saying how awful a dog she was. She was taking her to the pet store and, like, insisting on a muzzle. And she, like, has this back and forth with the shop owner about, like, no, this animal is beyond training. She needs a muzzle. And I just shut it off. I couldn't handle it. I couldn't handle it. I don't need to see Shirley from Community um, you know, insisting that this dog get a muzzle who's not even her dog and, like, doesn't even try to, like, work with the dog or anything, doesn't even consider that maybe she just needs to separate her cats from the dog, which would have been super easy. That house is massive. Put the dog in one room, put the cats in the other room. Everything's harmonious. But she doesn't, like, she doesn't, like, think about the anything. It's just animal abuse, the movie. It's awful. I couldn't get through it. It's a terrible... Why movie. even? It's a, it's a terrible... Uh... It's a terrible original movie. It's a terrible remake. Why is this? Why? Why? It's not the original is not that terrible. Um, I disagree. I think there's there's elements of the original that are that are good. Um, I but I don't understand like this. Literally, the reason why this category is called why even this is even bad at being a cash grab is because of this movie. Lady and the Tramp is bad at being a cash grab. They put it straight on Disney Plus. They try to pretend that they didn't make it. Hopefully no one heard about it, right? I have a, I have a sneaking suspicion if there weren't so many famous people in it, they might have never even released this movie, but there were a ton of famous people in it. Um, so they released it on Disney Plus and it's god awful. Don't waste your time. Just like Dumbo, don't waste your time. It's not worth it. You'll never get those hours back. I didn't waste my time. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I'm so uh, glad for you. Karen, I wish. Karen talked about it and I went, I'm starting school this week. I have a lot of things going on. I don't need to watch two hours of animal abuse and I didn't like it anyway. Oh, <laughs> uh, why do we hate why do we hate Dumbo? Uh is bad. I mean bad. Uh, the VOD will go up uh this afternoon. You can see exactly, but it's just it's just not good. I mean, the story's nonsensical. Basically all the same problems with Mulan. It doesn't make any damn sense. Yeah. Speaking of Mulan. That's next. That's next. Uh, Mulan, also, as you know, we did not like it. We did a whole episode on this. I think it goes somewhere either in very bad or why even. I it's not it's good. Very bad. I think I think that um, I think that they. <sighs> I don't think it's why even. Uh, the reason being because trying to think of some good things about this movie that we just <laughs> Jet Li's in it. <laughs> I appreciate them making an attempt, even though it failed, to do the Maleficent thing, to to change something about the original. 
it wasn't a copy and paste like Lion King. It wasn't a copy and paste like Cinderella. Uh, it, it, and it, like there was a change there and it was intentional. I hated it. I hated the change. Comparatively to the original movie, this movie sucks, but I don't think it sucks to the point of Dumbo, Lady and the Tramp, and Lion King. I, I guess I kind of agree with that. It's definitely the worst of the very bad, but um, yes. it's not as bad as Dumbo, Lion King, and Lady and the Tramp. Yes. Um, it is still very, very bad. Um, I, also... I, I sense there's a lot of meddling from the Chinese government in this, and I really wonder what kind of movie we would have gotten without that meddling. Um, yeah. and, and for that, I have a little bit more, uh, I give it a little bit more leeway than I give to Dumbo, Lion King, and Lady and the Tramp, you know? I agree. Um, and, and I think that there was, I mean, it also was prettier than all of those other movies. True. <laughs> yep. Oh, also this one involved humans as main characters. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yep. Uh, for Kay, it's very white, even because they Mary sued the fuck out of Mulan. Yes, they did. And it oh, was yeah. um, catered heavily to the CCP. Yeah, totally agree. I mean, we said Absolutely. as much in our episode. That's all very, very true. Yeah. And I, and, and I agree with Karen as far as it can, it can belong in those two. But I honestly think Dumbo, Lady and the Tramp and Lion King belong in its own category. <laughs> but if we wanted to create a different category under why even we could. Um, but I think that that yeah so in a so either category. either mulan is the worst of the very bad or the best of the why even yes yeah it's somewhere there. <laughs> i'm gonna go with worst of the very bad i really do think that the that the live action based on animals um with animals as the main characters belong in the last in the why even like yeah. i think that 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 makes sense yep uh the only reason jungle book is not down there is because mowgli was the main character yeah pretty much i mean really Really, you know, <laughs> and I think that and, and I, I, I really truly enjoyed um, the massive whatever it's called type of ape for King Louis. I really like that. I Why? Even because they didn't even put Mushu in it. I hate that. I miss Mushu. They didn't want magic in it. <laughs> but they added Chi and they changed it so that Chi was magic. It was so weird. Also, I guess one point for one point for Mulan is um, is the witch is hot, even though she never actually destroys anyone as she claims she can um missed opportunity there she could have been extra hot she could have been extra hot anyway yeah. Cruella um I watched Cruella coming back from Karen's house <gasps> on the plane on the plane ah uh it was really fucking good it's good right I told you so good. I'm it's actually good it needs to be in that top category yep agree um it did the Maleficent thing it is mm -hmm. not about the original it is not a pop copy and paste from the original it really has it, nothing to do with the yeah, original nothing to do with in fact is i would argue that it's a prequel yeah for the original remake and we might get the actual original remake from like a sequel point of view of Cru cruella but i don't mm -hmm. know um emma stone is charming as ever yeah uh, i like I the changes they made to the character to make it fit for this yeah. movie I enjoyed the Wicked-esque take to it, where it's like, you just don't understand the story. Yes. You believe what you heard through the tabloids as far as, like, her killing Dalmatians and stuff like that. Like, I really enjoyed that they played up that Wicked version, that the same very similarly that they did to Maleficent. Yes. Um, I And I appreciate also that Cruella, while being the protagonist, is truly not a good person. Mm-hmm. Um, she, she is not a villain because no one is a villain. No one is a villain in their own eyes. Like no one who is a villain thinks that they're a bad person. Um, but they, they make it very clear that she is not a good person. Mm -hmm. Uh, they also make it kind of clear that like, you should not like her, even though you do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I really yep. appreciate it. Yep. Um, oh, uh no it's emma stone and she rocks it honestly like she does such yeah. a good job she, does, she i in fact one of my favorite roles she's ever played i agree um, i agree I, I think she rocked it i think she did it perfectly i think it was an interesting twist it was a new story using character familiar characters which mm -hmm. as an rp -er, i love 
Yeah, that's how I felt about it, too. I thought all the changes that they made in this were justified. I thought that they were all coherent within this movie. Now, if you try to if you try to think about like, oh, if you watch this movie and then follow it up with 101 Dalmatians, certain certain things don't make sense. Well, duh. Um, but it's not trying to do that. It is coherent within the world of this movie. And the way that it's kind of what's kind of implied, or at least what I understood, is that, you know, this this is like the story of what Cruella's passed from her point of view, right? And then the 101 Dalmatians story that we've we've had in the past that's really everything from Roger's point of view right so so that's why the characters are, are quite different in this than they are in the original 101 Dalmatians it's it's all about the perspective of who's telling the story I also appreciate and I don't know if this was purposeful um but I appreciate that they used uh the CGI monstrosities of the being dead inside to their advantage they did actually um, they, they look good allowed, in this they allowed that dead inside sort of empty shell to be the dalmatians yeah uh, and it works and it perfectly worked. for the way they are in this movie it was awesome it was great but, but also they're just animals acting on instinct in this movie everything the dalmatians do good and bad by the way the trailer is kind of misleading into what actually happens in the movie so don't pay attention to the trailer memes it's not really how what happens how it goes down but i don't the, even the, remember the trailer the trailer is basically like implying that the whole reason Cruella hates Dalmatians is because Dalmatians killed her mom. Oh yeah, that's no, not no. what happens in the movie, y'all. No, no. Just, just in case you were wondering, the trailer is very misleading into the plot of this movie. Um, but yeah, the Dalmatians are actually just dogs acting on instinct, and so they do positive and negative things in this movie. But, but it's it works. It, this this style of animation absolutely works for what the Dalmatians do in this movie. Yeah, no, it's it's awesome. It's great. It's a great movie. Um, yeah. In fact, for me, it's just like I placed it slightly different in the order for uh, for my ranking. It's above Maleficent for me. I enjoyed this more than I enjoyed Maleficent. Um, yep. I, I actually I, I need to arrange it. mine actually within the categories. That's good. Good shout. Okay. Um. Yeah. No, I yeah. I appreciated it. One hundred percent. Okay. Yeah, no, that's probably right. Move Dumbo there. Okay, so here's my ranking. From from best to worst, I've got Cruella, Maleficent, Cinderella, Alice in Wonderland, the second Maleficent, Christopher Robin, excuse me, um, Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, Jungle Book, um, Alice in Wonderland through the Looking Glass, Mulan, Lion King, Dumbo, Lady and the Tramp. And I stand by that. Cruella's the best one, Lady and the Tramp's the worst one. Um, no contest for me. I could futz around with some things with the stuff in the middle, depending on how I'm feeling that day. But, um, I 100% stand by what I put in the actually good and what I put in the why even categories. I got Cinderella. Oh, do you want to link? I think if you, if you save it, I think if you save it, then we can. It just downloads an image. Oh, okay. Okay. I can. Parents list. Yeah, that's what I'll do. Yeah, share. Okay, no, it does. It doesn't just download an image. Really? Yeah, so I did save. Um, and then you can share on Twitter or download this image. So if okay. I share it on Twitter, I think it will give me an actual link. Yes. Um, okay, so you guys do this. If anybody in chat did this, do the same and share your links. So there's a link to my specific one. And you can do it I yourself. Download. Here's a link for doing it yourself. You haven't seen most of them. No worries, Kay. Most of them are not worth watching. That's what we discovered here today. Yes. Oh, share on no, let's share template on Twitter. Is that sharing? You have to click save first. It's like, I'll yeah, go back. It just, goes to, it just goes to download. If I save, it just says to download your image. So look at my screen. Do you have this save slash download? Yep. Okay. So I click that and then I just click save. Mine, not only says, mine only says download. Oh, that's so weird. Yeah. Maybe because you're on a Mac. I don't know. And maybe anyway. I, you have a login? Mm, yeah, actually, I did have a login. Maybe, maybe that's the that's difference. Maybe that's it, too. Okay. Or anyway, go for it. Just do, do it verbally. What's your uh, list? Very similar. Cinderella is number one, which we knew. Cru Cruella, Maleficent, Beauty and the Beast, Alice, Christopher Robin, second Maleficent, Aladdin, Jungle Book, Second Alice in Wonderland, Mulan, 
Lion King, Dumbo, Lady of the Tramp. Yep. Pretty similar. Pretty similar. Yeah. I think our, our best and our worst are basically the same. Yes. Yeah. Well, Kay, out I of the ones not, you have watched, yeah. out of the ones I you have, have watched, which do you like and dislike? Sorry, go ahead, Landon. Oh, he, uh, Kay was like, a Mac? And I was like, yes, I do have Yeah. Mac. Yeah, Landon's a Mac girl. <laughs> my soul. all right so that that was it that was all of our our quick fire hot takes on all of the disney live action remakes um we're already committed at this point to doing a beauty and the beast versus beauty and the beast episode because clearly we have some strong opinions about that let's get spicy right um <laughs> uh but if there's any others where you guys kind of liked our quick fire hot takes um let me know and we can do a versus. Now, some of these don't fit for verses, right? Some of them are too different, but like ones that, that fit for a verses is like Lion King, Dumbo, Jungle Book, Aladdin, you know, etc. Um, The only one I'm going to veto is I will not do a versus episode of Lady and the Tramp. I'm never going to finish that remake. So sorry. Um, It's just not inside of me. I don't um, have this. I, also, I love playing with Disney, so I'm also perfectly content with uh, doing like a rank the original movies. Yeah. Re- like re- the remakes or um or maybe doing- we could do a ranking of renaissance disney movies i'm down for that that would be hard because most of them are really really good <laughs> let's, do it. let's and instead of the categories being like fine <laughs> kind of bad bad very bad and why could be like movie? amazing bad. i feel like we should have a bad just because there's one or two in there that belong in there for me but bad good great spectacular just classic magical the top magical. category has to be magical since it's disney <laughs> yes, love that so maybe we can do that i like the idea of doing sequels um after we've done that one because i also yep. think sequels are really fun to debate mm-hmm. uh 110 down to do any of this yes yes for sure um all right do we have a good news article this week did you grab one or no article. i have one okay okay link I'm me always prepared <gasps> a video but it's just real cool Okay. Uh, and it's not like the most good news. I just really liked it because I wanted to be this. Okay. So Kay says, so before we get to the article, I just want to see what Kay says. Um, I actually love Beauty and the Beast if it's not compared to the OG, even with Emma Watson's stiff acting. I mean, fair. There's things to like about it. So I get it if you like it. Um, but Maleficent is amazing and Mulan would be my worst. So that's out of the ones that she has seen. Yeah. I mean, I I, I think those are pretty, those are pretty good takes. Yeah. All right. Curious whale nudges paddleboarders in Argentina in stunning video. Oh, I love these. I love them too. Okay, it's here just we go. Brings joy. It's not oh, like a music. huge world changing anything. It just brings me joy. Like I want to. Always when I watch these things, it's like, oh, I want to be the paddleboarder. I want that to happen yeah. to me. It would be like yeah. so terrifying, but it would be like the most amazing story to share. I love it. No, it's so cool. It's just, it's I. I love it. Mm-hmm. I really, really want to see an orca in real life. Hey, go to who Alaska. Said who said that? Okay. Um, hey, I wasn't checking the chat. Okay, you and I, we can go for an Alaska Seattle trip. Let's do it. They're a lot smaller than you might think. They're really not that big. I love them so much. There are three things I love in this world. I love African elephants. I love orca whales. And I love opossums. <laughs> Those are the three animals that just every time yep bring me joy (laughs) too bad they didn't have the the possum on display at the thing that we went to but at one of the at one of the things that we went to while landon was here um they had uh like animals of south carolina area so she got to see a lot of wild animals they had an opossum area but they didn't have any possums in it at the time we were there so yeah it was sad really sad oh, it's okay they live here so like one's in my backyard I oh find one of these. <laughs> i mean i don't know that for sure but undoubtedly one is here yep so okay anyway so that's it that's our ranking that's i hope you guys ranking. liked it <laughs> hey you know what looking at your ranking you're pretty spread out three three th- three 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 two three i mean i feel like you can kind of see how this like whole thing slowly declined because like the yeah. earlier movies I've got them higher up and the later movies I've got them lower down. Cruella is really like the main um, differentiator there because it's it, you know it's the latest one and it, it's my favorite out of all of these. But it's kind of funny you can kind of see this like slow like sort of decline. You know there's some there's some bumps in there where it's not exactly but it's it's pretty like it's pretty much like this. You know it like this. it very much is. 
Yeah. Uh, and we have some upcoming. Little Mermaid's coming later next year. Uh, Jungle Book Ooh. sequel. Apparently a Lion King prequel. Um, we'll yeah. see. It'll be great. Yeah, I kind of want to talk about the little, whenever it, it actually comes out, I kind of want to talk about it, but we'll have to wait till it's out of $30 jail so that I can watch it more easily. <laughs> Which one? Um, the Little Mermaid, when it comes out, do like a versus episode, yeah. but we'll have to wait until it's, it's out of $30 jail. To, it's not supposed to come out until 2023. Yeah, it's going to so be a while. We'll see if Disney Plus is even around. I mean, I'm sure it is. They're, they're killing it as far as, maybe not It's going to still be here. I just but. don't know. I don't know if it'll work the same way. So you're right about that. There might not be a $30 jail thing by then. Who knows? Who knows? Anyways, well, what, what are we doing next week? What are we talking about next week? Oh, my God. Oh, what are we talking about next week? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Let me pull I'm it. I'm so it unprepared. Up. Oh, no. What are we uh, talking about next week? Let me go find it. Uh, I'm pulling up our list. We're so organized, y'all guys we've had over a year of this and we've not failed to answer that question until today so i know right oh it's a community day that's why you didn't remember oh it's community day yeah we're playing stardew valley yes so we're doing a stardew valley community day next week if you're interested in playing stardew valley with us then you need to get in the discord server i'll put that in the chat right there and get the go through the verification right and then get the farmer role in the special roles and that is how you can get all of the info for the Stardew Valley Community Day. We're probably going to be ending, we're probably going to be playing the end of the, our first year of spring and getting started on summer. So yeah. that's what we're going to be doing next week. It's going to be lots of fun. Yep. I have become addicted since <laughs> our last Community Day. So. <laughs> yeah. Uh, little uh, did Landon know, it was just it was just a cult thing. I was pulling her into the Stardew cult. Secretly trying to make me a gamer, trying to make me have a stream. Uh, that's that's what Karen's trying to do. I mean, it's not really a secret. I want all of my friends to be streamers. Kay, you should also stream. I don't know why you don't. You've been hanging out with streamers for forever. Anyways, there's probably, we'll there's probably an actual personal reason, and I'm like overstepping. So sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna get I'm gonna get bored one day, and I'm just gonna start streaming. That's what's gonna happen. It's gonna last 23 minutes, and then I'm gonna be like, I'm done with this. I'll just stick to Saturdays. <laughs> yep. Domtastic right. gaming. Thank you. We are about to raid somebody. Um. Oh, and then next, and then Thursday. Uh, we're not going to be playing Final Fantasy X on Artistic License. Instead, we are going to be playing uh, Mist 2021. So they they made another remake of Mist. This is a game that is very near and dear to my heart, very close to me. Um, I played it when I was a kid with my dad. And um, honestly, I can thank Mist for kind of how my brain is wired in a lot of ways. So if you want to know what that means, um, come to my stream on Thursday and you're going to you're gonna see it. Mist is absolutely, um, it, it's almost like a, a reverent, uh, in a, like a religious way for me. So I'm really excited to share it with you guys. This is finally the version that's that's good enough and pretty enough that I think it's it'll be good to stream. So I'm excited to to show you guys that game. All right, so that's me. Um, where can everybody find you, Landon? Uh, you can find me on Twitter, Land in Maine. You can also find me on Instagram at Land in Maine as well. Uh, not and you can find me on. TikTok. I actually posted a TikTok for the first time in forever. Well, I have to uh, watch it then. Crazy. You should watch it. Uh, <laughs> um, and that's basically it. Yeah, just find me at Landon Maine and any of the social medias. Uh, I post sometimes. Twitter is the most entertaining right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right. And here's all my socials. Y'all know how that works. I do things the same way every other content creator does. Um, okay. Uh, let's raid into Domtastic Gaming. There we go. Thank you, Kay, for leading that raid. And um, of course, as always, guys, don't forget to make it a great day. And don't forget to be awesome. Yeah, Mochi knows. Woo! All right. Bye, guys. Y'all have fun in the raid. He's playing um, Hunt Shadow Down. So, so go watch Ooh. some Hunt Shadow Down. All right. See y'all later. Bye. Bye.